Okay, so uh, I'm going to go through, this is uh, question number five from our uh, problem set on chapter six and seven. So this one dealt with calculating the solubility of lead iodate in a solution of 0.02 molar magnesium nitrate. And in this case, we're accounting for activity here. So um, since, this, since this chapter uh, specifically dealt with activity, uh, I didn't state that, uh, but if this were an exam question, I would say accounting for activity effects. Okay, so uh, what we want to do here is we want to figure out uh, our ionic strength, which we can use to determine our, our activity coefficients on our lead and our iodate, and then uh, we can then use that to determine our uh, activity concentrations at activity. So, and activities. Um, so. What we'll do here is we need to figure out the reaction that we're talking about in lead iodate. You'd look this up in the table, right? And because this is a practice problem, you can look this up in your book. But in, uh, on an exam, I'll give you this information. So um, our lead iodate is a solid, which dissolves into lead 2 plus and two iodates here, which have a single minus charge. And the KSP, again, this would be found on a table. And again, I will give this type of information to you on an exam. It would be 2.5 times 10 to the minus 13. And so if you know something about this, this, this KSP is fairly small. And so we would consider this a sparingly soluble salt. And that's important because uh, this solution is sort of uh, in it. This, this lead iodate is in a stronger solution of magnesium nitrate. So when that comes into play is that, that if you remember all, uh, in order to determine the ionic strength, you have to add up all the ions in the solution. In this case, because these ions, we're going to assume that these are much smaller than this 0.02 molar that's coming from magnesium nitrate. So we're going to say they're going to have a negligible effect on the ionic strength. And so when it comes to determining the ionic strength, we'll use our equation for mu, which uh, is just one half, right, our concentration of magnesium times charge, which in this case is 2, magnesium 2 plus, and we add the concentration of our nitrate times the charge squared, which is 1 in this case. So this is the type of thing, you know, if you guys see something like this and you're sort of confused, you may not know whether magnesium nitrate is a strong electrolyte or a weak electrolyte. Yeah, if you ask me, I'll tell you. Uh, it's the type of thing that you might you know, you might want to ask me. I'll say yes. That is in fact a strong electrolyte. So that means that it completely dissolves. Okay. And so uh, the concentration of magnesium in this case, because it's only a one to two ratio, this is going to be just 0.02 molar. And because we're forming two of the nitrate, that this is going to be 0.04 molar. All right. So we, you know, plug and chug and get this value. And we get our mu is equal to 0 0.06 molar. And again, that is our ionic strength. All right, so in an ideal world, we'd be able to look up on our table, and we'd see, okay, we're looking for, we're considered with lead and iodate. Uh, so lead is somewhere here in the twos, and iodate somewhere in the ones, but you'll notice 0.06 molar is not here, right? We only have information for 0.05 molar and 0.1 molar. So there's a couple different approaches you can do this. Uh, you could do the interpolation method, which I showed you in... Uh, on a previous web video, and that will totally be acceptable for this exam. But in this case, I'm going to go through as I did in the book, or as I did on, on the, on the uh, example uh, and the key, and I'm just going to charge from using the exact method. And both of them will get you to the right answer. They might be slightly different, but they'll be uh, very close, and they'll both be acceptable for our purposes. So uh, in order to determine the activity coefficient, right, so if we look at lead, let's say, we're going to plug in um, this equation, which is 5, 1 times the charge here, squared, uh, times the ionic, the square root of the ionic strength. And this is going to be over, so that's a 5, 1, I'm sorry, my handwriting's a little messy, plus, um, we have our alpha value here over our 305 times square root of mu up here. Okay. 
And so what we'll find is that if you look at our table, where's our alpha values? In this case, our I date is, is 450, and our lead here is also 450. So I'm just going to write these values in. Where's my little marker here? Let's change colors. You say, OK, so mu, we just calculated that in our previous part of this, and that's 0 0.060 molar. And that is in both these parts here. Uh, we're going to see our charge. In this case, the charge on lead is let's use purple, nice and pretty. That's two. All right. So that's going to end up being squared. And then our alpha value down here, which I, we just showed you, we found that on the table. That one, alpha, sorry, is going to be 450. All right. So you go through all that. You get your your uh, value here at the end. You calculate that. And you get your activity coefficient for lead, which ends up being 0 0.431. And if we go back and look at this table, let's see if that makes sense. Our lead, right, we know that our lead is going to be somewhere between 0.455 and 0.371, right? Because this is the concentration range we're looking at, or the ionic strength range. And that's going to be closer to 0.455, and in fact, that's what we find, right? It's less than 0.455, but it's close to it. So that sort of passes that sort of logic test. All right, and so we can do the same thing for iodate. Um, and so what I'm going to do here is, you know, I'm actually going to be even even lazier in this case. So I'm just going to, all right, we're just going to remember that, that value here. And in this case, I'm going to... You see that all these values, almost all these values are going to be the same. In this case, I'm going to do iodate. And the only difference here is that in the case of iodate, our charge is 1. Okay. So now if we go down, we plug in the same numbers, right? Because if we look back at this table, we see that iodate here has the same size. And we go through and we solve for iodate. We get this value, which ends up working out to be 0 0.810. Again, let's see if that passes a logic test. All right, I date should be between 0.82 and 0.775. We should be closer to 0.82 because we're closer to this 0 0.05 molar uh, ionic strength. And in fact, we are close to that. So that is good. All right, so now we have to get to the solving the, the equilibrium expression. So if we think about our um, KSP, the more precise definition of it in this case. So we said the sort of the generic way um, if you're not accounting for activity would be to say it's lead times iodate squared. And that will say that no, that's not going to be the case because we're dealing with activity. And so in fact, KSP is really the activity of lead 2 plus times the activity of um, I date squared. All right. So now um, we remember activity is just right, it's going to be our uh, concentration of lead times the activity coefficient of lead, and then our um, Activity co our concentration of iodate squared times the activity coefficient of iodate squared. So we can just plug in our values that we found, and so if we were, or so I should make sure this is all equal to KSP, and we know that. Um, Every time we form a lead, we're going to have to form two of our iodates. And so this is just going to be x, and this is just going to be x squared. And so and we can plug in our values, which we determined previously in our previous slide. Um, this guy is, what was that? What did we find that to be? 0. 0.431. Yeah, 0. 0.431. And this one we found to be 0.810. That's right. All right. And so we combine these all together, and we end up um, we end up with an expression that looks like right. What does this end up being? Um, 
you end up with 1.131 times x cubed. Oh, I hope you guys noticed I made a mistake there. Sorry about that. Uh, it was the i that, because we formed this in a 2 to 1 ratio, that this is actually going to be 2x squared. Apologize about that. Okay. Um, okay. So, uh, so in this case, we end up with 1.31. Uh, and so, simply, if we plug in our value for KSP, KSP in this case is 2.5 times 10 to minus 13 equals 1.31 times x cubed. So we do, we divide this by 1.31, and then we take the cubic root of it, so x equals cubic root of 2.5 times 10 to the minus 13 divided by 1.31. And this gives us our, our x. Okay, so our x is equal to, that ended up being 6.0, times 10 to the minus 5. Alright, so we think about our x is, so our, our lead concentration is x, and so, uh, and our, and our iodate concentration is just 2x. Okay, and so, uh, we'll say, ooh, keep, well, that's not what I'm meaning to do here. Sorry about that. What am I doing? Current slide. Alright, let's go back. Um, okay. And so I guess I'll just put these values up here since we're running out of space. Um, nah, that's not what I want to do. Okay, and so if we put our values up here because we know that uh, our lead concentration equals x, and that equals 6.0 times 10 to the minus 5 molar, and our iodate equals 2x, and so that equals 1.2 times 10 to the minus 4 molar. All right, hopefully you all were able to follow along with that. Sorry about the handwriting at various places, but uh, I did notice that there was a couple small errors in the uh, key, and so, like, for example, I forgot to write that I squared this, but then I followed it through in the end, but hopefully you all were able to follow along. Okay, so I'm going to follow this up in another few minutes with another one of these videos.